the years, we've spent some time trying to give you the historical context of the Christmas story, not because we think you need to know historical facts as much as uh, we think there's significance in understanding what was happening in the culture. Je Jesus came as a lightning strike into this culture of chaos, and it would start off a series of spiritual earthquakes that would change everything. So today, I want to tell you another part of the story that I think is uh, worth considering. It's different than what I've understood, and I think there's some, some reason to believe that it's part of the story. Outside of Bethlehem, a couple miles, is a place called Migdal Eder. Uh, you'll see it referenced in the scriptures as Eder in Genesis and Joshua and 1 Chronicles. So there's historical grounding to this location, and it was used as a watchtower for a lot of different things over the years. But we know from historical documents what it was being used for during the time that Jesus was born. At that location, um, they were raising large sums of cattle and sheep that, to be used in sacrifices in Jerusalem. So people would travel all around Israel to Jerusalem to come for Passover or other sacrifices that they would have to do. They didn't want to bring their animals. And so they would be raised kind of locally and taken to Jerusalem for sale. Now, if this is the case, um, these shepherds are not the kind of shepherds that we've talked about in the past. Most shepherds would have been uneducated, bottom of the barrel, they would have been rejects of society, not these guys. These guys would have been highly trained shepherds because they had to certify if the lamb that was being delivered to the temple was perfect enough for the sacrifice. So there's some evidence, um, although I can't say for sure that it happened in Migdal Eder, in that tower, or uh, around it, but as a baby was born, we know this process unfolded. One of those shepherds would take that baby lamb and inspect it. They would look for any imperfection, any blemish that would cause that lamb to be disqualified for being sent to the temple. If it was qualified for the temple, they would wrap that lamb in swaddling material. Now they either did that to mark it so they knew which lambs were perfect and able to go to the temple, or they did it to protect it from getting scratches or anything that would, any sort of mar would disqualify that lamb. Now, this is, this is kind of interesting. There are some people who believe that Jesus was born at Migdal Eder. I, I'm not one of those. I think there's too much evidence in the scriptures with Cataluma and understanding how a house would have been built, that Jesus, Jesus was born in a house in Bethlehem. I think that's the case. But if you're asking yourself, where did the shepherds come from who could have made a trip that evening to see a baby, the evidence starts to stack up that this would be the group of people who would probably have shown up. There's, there's a couple factors. Normal shepherds would have actually taken their sheep into a sheepfold or a, a cave for the evening. You don't leave them out, that's dangerous. But if you have so many sheep that you can't do that with, you're leaving the sheep out and you're out there with them. So that would have been the case and they would have been nearby and there was another factor that I think makes it likely that these guys were the guys that were tapped to show up and look at Jesus. Um, it, we we kind of get a clue of it because the shepherds were told um, while they were in the fields, this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in clothing lying in a manger. Now, um, what's, what's the sign? That they got the right baby in Bethlehem? Bethlehem is not a big place. Uh, but, and there wouldn't have been very many babies in mangers. So what was the sign? Well, um, the sign very likely was that swaddling material. Now think about this for a little bit. Um, these guys would have walked in and seen a baby wrapped in the same kind of material that they wrapped their sheep in that would go to the temple as a sacrifice. It starts to make sense um, what happens after this because in verse 18 of Luke chapter 2, it details how when the shepherds leave, they went around talking to all these people about what they had seen and people were amazed at what they said. What would they have been amazed by? That they saw a baby? Maybe it was amazed that they saw some angels and they were directed to look at a baby. But maybe this was more the point. Maybe these guys, whose jobs it was to certify perfect sacrifices for the temple, recognized that God had just sent an ultimate sacrifice. And from his earliest moments in that manger, Jesus was marked with a cloth that would have indicated he was going to be a sacrifice for mankind and that the shepherds would have left talking about what they had seen. 
and they would have had some credibility to have these conversations because these were trained men. And so people would have been amazed about what they had seen. I, I think um, we've lost that amazement at times and we get caught up in the drama and excitement of Christmas and I, ho I actually hope you have a dramatic Christmas. I hope you give each other gifts. I hope you love on each other. I hope you build great memories. I hope all of that is true. But I hope as uh, you think about this day uh, that you'll use what we just talked about to think back to this birth of a baby that changed everything for you and me. And from his earliest moments in that manger, he was marked as a sacrifice that would change your life and my life forever. And I hope that has an impact on how you celebrate with each other today. Love you guys. I want you to have a great Christmas. And I don't want you to forget why we do all of this celebrating. Jesus coming to a world of chaos as the perfect sacrifice for you and me.